pursuing his uh, towards his PhD degree in electrical engineering at the University of Aveiro in uh, Portugal. Um, yeah, he's working on real SI implementations of motion estimation circuits for video compression and standards or codecs. Um, yeah, he's also interested in yeah, basic source coding and uh, HVC compressor spinner, and especially the FPGA and AC implementation of these. So, yeah. Hi, good afternoon to everyone. Um, today I'm going to give a small talk based on the title Fast Motion Estimation Algorithm for HEVC. So, this is the algorithm of my talk. First, I will want to um, cover what is motion estimation and about its motion estimation tools and algorithms. Then, I want to discuss about my proposed motion estimation algorithm then followed by simulation results and conclusion. So, HEVC coding structure, this is covered by most of uh, the speakers. So, it's just uh, uh, the block coding hierarchy is more generalized than AVC. Like we have 64 by 64 block sizes which are called coding units and each coding unit is recursively subdivided into square blocks until 8 by 8 uh, each coding unit is assigned watery based prediction units and each PU is again assigned watery based transform units so each CU is assigned uh, prediction units of either intra type or inter type or skip type and just now I heard it is also <coughs> as a new type called merge type so <coughs> motion estimation this is a type of predictive block coding so just like in adaptive DPCM we have uh, motion estimation followed by compensation so the basic um, the basic goal of motion estimation is to find the best predicted block in the reference frame which is either past or future frame corresponding to each block of the current frame of a video sequence like here let us take this block in a set of two frames in a video sequence so corresponding to this block this is the this is the collocated block and this is the search window so in this search window we are searching each and every block so which is the best match block for this for this uh, current block so we have here and the shift in this block is denoted as motion vector and it is signaled to the decoder so <clears throat> the motion estimation is done based on this equation the here uh, J is the cost, Lagrangian cost of the motion vector and SAD is the distortion, um, sum of absolute difference and lambda is the Lagrangian multiplier and R is the bitrate required for this motion vector difference. So what is the goal of motion estimation is to find a block which has least cost that means it has to optimize between the distortion and this material. So this motion estimation is also used in various applications like motion tracking, motion detection, frame rate of conversion, like, uh, like video compression. So if we take a look about the basic tools, these are four basic uh, sub tools that are there in motion estimation, the first one is the motion prediction. So then followed by global search, then followed by determination, then find refinement. So the motion estimation algorithm uses motion vectors of previously coded neighboring blocks. To save the computation time, it uses the previously coded neighboring blocks to find the initial search point. Then followed by global um, search pattern. That means. The motion estimation algorithm finds the global minimum using a predefined patterns like square, diamond, hexagon and then followed by early termination. 
to save the computation time, what this motion estimation algorithm uses is it defines a threshold which may be fixed or adaptive and uh, it terminates the search process if that uh, condition is satisfied. If it is not satisfied, it again does a fine refinement. Uh, fine refinement using patterns like uh, um, diamond or square. So these are some of the algorithms. Um, broadly classifying, we have two types, full search and fast search algorithms. Full search is nothing but the algorithm searches each and every block in the reference frame search window. So it is most time consuming. So we have fast search algorithms which skips some blocks. So <coughs> the newly adopted uh, codex like AVC and HEVC uses advanced hybrid algorithms. These two are some of the examples. CPJS and UMX are defined in AVC. And HEVC adopts this algorithm called TJS algorithm. It has two uh, two patterns, which are diamond diamond pattern and raster scan pattern. So this diamond pattern is used to find the global minimum one. So this is the algorithm that is defined in HEVC. To brief out, it has motion vector prediction stage. Which, uh, it has spatial up left, upper left and upper right and median predictors are used. Then followed by diamond and uh, square pattern which are used to find the global minimum point. Then followed by raster scan pattern. That means raster scan pattern is nothing but the subsample version of the search window which is this one. Then followed by fine refinement. So what we have proposed is uh, a hexagonal pattern for instead of using diamond pattern. If you look closely this diamond pattern, we have 8 points for each grid. So if, uh, if we take the hexagon here, we have only 6 points for each grid. So if we take such range of 64, in a total for one block we have 52 points for diamond pattern and 40 points for hexagon pattern. So what we have achieved is 15% gain in total uh, encoding speed without affecting much in bitrate and the video quality. So this hexagon is done in many previous algorithms but it is not there in, uh, in, uh, in this TJS algorithm. So, for a larger sequence, this hexagon reduces the video quality. Like we have here, the hexagon has horizontal points uh, which are straight to this collocated block. So, horizontal hexagons are good for horizontal motion samples but lose performance for vertically moving objects. On the other hand, if we take this vertical hexagon, this hexa vertical hexagon is good for vertical, in vertical motions but lose performance in horizontal moving objects because it has to interpolate these two points or it has to go for fine refinement which again increases the encoding, encoding time. So in order to cope up with this, we have proposed a rotating hexagonal pattern. So it has one horizontal followed by one vertical and then followed by horizontal till the search range. So, what we have observed is we have two types of rotating hexagonal pattern. The first one has the horizontal hexagon, starts with the horizontal hexagon. The second one starts with the vertical hexagon initially. So, according to translational motion vector model, because the HEVC and JVC are not rotational type motion vectors, it only adopts translation of motion vector. So, according to this, the motion vector density is more at the origin and motion vector density is more in the horizontal direction than vertical. So, initially, if we take horizontal hexagon, uh, it gives better performance. So, we have used horizontal hexagon. Uh, 
is type 1 rotating hexagon in our algorithm and simulation results also showed uh, type 1 is slightly better than type 2. So then we have uh, in included an adaptive early termination stage. So this adaptive early termination stage um, after finding the global minimum the algorithm uh, searches for this condition. That means if you take a group of pictures uh, in a GOP, the first frame is always central, followed by inter. If you, if you take the I mean low low complexity or high efficiency, other than all intro mode, the second frame is intro mode. The second frame, if we take the average of all inter prediction blocks in the first frame of first inter frame of GOP we can use this uh, we can use this average to find uh, to put as a threshold to the rest of the pictures in GOP so the average uh, but <coughs> the HEVC has different block sizes like it has different depth and prediction unit size so each block size has its own the threshold so this is the equation you have proposed. So this is just nothing but the average of the cost of the first iter frame in GOP. And the N represents number of coding units, I mean prediction units. And cost represents the distortion cost, SAD. So this 2 power d plus p is empirically we have observed. Um, so this adaptive early termination is used in the algorithm. <coughs> so these are some of the simulation results. Uh, if we observe here, uh, diamond versus rotating hexagonal pattern, we have achieved almost 15% in the encoding time. And uh, if we use the same pattern with early termination stage, the motion estimation time saving is almost 53%. So this is the encoding time, total encoding time, including the time taken by the other blocks. So the encoding time savings are almost 10% just with rotating external pattern. And uh, with early termination stage, it is almost 37%. So these are some of the RD curves for different sequences. So this curve shows that there is negligible loss in uh, bitrate and PSMR. So this is TJ as diamond with diamond pattern and with rotating hexagon <coughs> with and with early termination stage. So apart from these savings, we have almost negligible loss in bitrate and video quality. So if we take close observe, observation, um, we can, um, these are the Zontigard data matrix. Zontigard uh, matrix is nothing but the difference in the area of these RD curves. We cannot precisely see this, but we can we can do it empirically using Zontigard matrix. So this is diamond versus hexagon. We have loss of 0.01% 0.01 dB I mean. and uh, after using rotating hexagon the bitrate uh, decreases 10 times reduced I mean 0.001 dB so this is just for 300 frames of sequence if we take larger this value will increase so if we take uh, bitrate saving the increase in bitrate with hexagon is 0.2% and after using rotating hexagon this increase in the bitrate is only 0.02% not, not not, not that means this is 10 times reduced compared to original hexagon so we have proposed a fast motion estimation algorithm and introducing a rotating hexagon pattern the uses the motion estimation time by almost 15% uh, and uh, 
total equity decline by 10% without affecting much in the quality. Introducing early termination, adaptive early termination step. It is a semi time by 53% and total encoding time by 37%. So this is compared to the already existing algorithm in HEVC. So and without affecting PSMR and bitrate. So this algorithm we are trying to improve much uh, better by introducing more efficient prediction, predictors and prediction solvers. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Um, yeah. Last time in the session, are there any questions in your audience regarding the talk? Yep.